Since the removal of Dragon Slayers in set 5.5, we have to play Yasuo in a different way. In this video, I'll be going over the build, what items you make, how to play before, during, and after level 7, then I will go into some in-depth positioning examples. The build is a little flexible, and these are our four core units. We have Yasuo as the main carry, Lee Sin as the secondary carry, Diana to provide great backline access and CC, Sejuani is a decent frontliner and also gives us 4 Nightbringers. With this comp, we're slowly at level 7 for 3 star Yasuo, Lee Sin, and Sejuani, and the remaining 3 units will depend a little on what you need and what you hit, but a common level 7 board is this. Here we put in Irelia for 2 Legionnaire and to give us a bit more frontline. Rel is in there as well for Cavalier and Shielding for our mainly melee team. Jax is the 7th unit to give us both Skirmisher and 2 Ironclads. Another variation is 6 Nightbringers. This variation is better when the lobby has mixed damage, and also when we need more damage into our Yasuo. We play Irelia as the 7th unit, as she gives us 2 Legionnaire and Frontline here as well. Another variation is 4 Legionnaires. This gives Yasuo a lot more attack speed, and here you can also go for 3 star Riven, or itemize a 2 star Raven as well. Your 3 star priority for this comp is Yasuo, Lee Sin, Sejuani, and you can also 3 star Irelia and Riven if you are playing them. Once you hit your 3 stars, you will push to either level 8 or 9, and I will go more in depth on what you add in there in the post level 7 part of the video. Yasuo is the primary carry for this comp, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Hurricane. This is because he deals true damage with his auto attacks after casting a spell, and with Hurricane, we're dealing true damage to multiple people. The second item for Yasuo wants to be Hand of Justice. This item lets him deal even more base damage that scales with Nightbringer, and with Legionnaire we're also getting a decent amount of sustain even if we roll damage on the Hodge. The third item for Yasuo wants to be RFC, JG, Archangels, Titans, or Deathcap. Any of these work fine, RFC gives a bit more attack speed and survivability, JG increases our damage and also lets our true damage bolts crit, Archangels and Deathcap give more AP that scales with Nightbringer, and Titans gives us tankiness and more damage. One item that is insanely good for this comp is Banshee's Claw. This lets Yasuo survive a CC cast, which can make or break a lot of fights, since he wants to scale up with his ultimate as fast as possible. After you have itemized Yasuo, you want to itemize Lee Sin. He wants any tank items or AP items. You can also itemize Diana. She wants Frozen Heart, Spirit Sojin, QSS, or GA to make sure that she casts. If you get a spatula, the best item to make is Cavalier Spat. This works great as a third item for Yasuo, or on Lee Sin. You can also make Assassin Lee Sin to slow the attack speed of enemy backliners. Here is the Radiant item tier list. Blue buff is S tier as Yasuo will auto-cast, 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 and deal an insane amount of true damage very quickly. TG is for Lee Sin, and Frozen Heart is for Diana. The carousel priority for this comp is Bow, Glove, Rod, then Belt. Since we're rolling for this comp at level 7, we can play almost any opener we want to, but the strongest opener for this comp that we can consistently hit is 3 Skirmishers with Uder or Olaf as the item carrier. And some other variations are Callista with either A-Bomb or Redeem Frontline, Varus with Rangers, or Tristana with Cannoneers. Once we have our opener, we need to make items, and as a general rule, we want to make an item if we have 4 or more components. Some items that are strong early game and that transition well into Yasuo late game are Bramble, Banshee's Claw, Hodge, Hurricane, Sunfire, and TG. Since we're not slow rolling until level 7 with this comp, the goal is to get there at stage 4-1 with 50 gold or more. We pretty much play the early and mid game like any other comp, but we generally want to play a bit more aggressive than usual. This is because we want to avoid rolling at level 6, therefore I always pre-level to 4 on 1-4, mostly to get the chance of hitting 3 cost units in the shop as early as possible, but also to play aggressive and to save HP. If you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in-depth on the subject. At the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play reroll Yasuo is to have at least one bow for Hurricane and at least one component for another Yasuo item. The units we have here matter a little, as the more we have before we start slow rolling, the faster we will hit. In the mid game, we want to be level 6 on 3-2 to keep the aggression up and also to get better shops. We definitely prefer to not roll here, but if we did take a lot of damage in the early game, we will have to roll a little bit here as well. When rolling here, you pick up units for the level 7 comp and hopefully find Yasuo and use them as a carry. 
If not, then Riven, Nidalee, or another Skirmisher can also be used as carries until you find Yasuo. Once you reach 50 gold, we start slow rolling, meaning we roll on to 50 gold every single turn. This is to maximize our odds of hitting 3 star units. Our 3 star priority is Yasuo, Lee Sin, Sejuani, Irelia, then Riven if you're playing her. Meaning that if you need to sell a unit for bench space, you sell Riven's first, then Irelia, then Sejuani's. But in some cases, if you're really close to Irelia, but far off of Sejuani, you can sell off Sejuani as you're not going to 3 star her that game. I also want to preface here that the only 3 stars you need is Yasuo and Lee Sin. Sejuani, Irelia, and Riven are just icing on the cake. If you're low in HP once you get to stage 4 of 1, you might have to roll down a bit to stabilize. This is not preferred, but you cannot tank stage 4, as you will take a lot of damage here. By stage 5 1, you will generally need everything 2 star in order to be stable, and if you are far off Yasuo 3 star here, you might have to push level 8 or 9 instead and just try to top 4. My biggest pet peeve about this comp is that if you hit Yasuo 3 star, it is almost always a guaranteed top 4, but if you don't hit Yasuo 3 star, it is very often a bot 4, if not a bot 6. So if you are far off of him, going level 8 to put in another unit might give you enough of a boost to save HP to hopefully get a 4th place. But if you chase the 3-star, generally you will need to hit it by stage 5-5, so roll to 0 gold there in order to hit. Once you hit Yasuo 3-star, you stop slow rolling. Even if you are close to Lee Sin, you can hit him on your level 8 or 9 roll down anyways. After that, you will push to either level 8 or 9 to add in more units. Once you hit level 8, you will either keep pushing to level 9 if you are still high on HP and high on gold, but in most cases you will have to roll down at level 8. The 8th unit you are looking for depends a little on which variation you ran with, but in most cases you will add a Nautilus if you need 3 Ironclads, Viego for more backline access, he fits into all 3 variations, Akshan can go into the 6 Nightbringer comp, especially if you have an item or 2 in Aphilios, and if you get to level 9 you will usually add in another Diana or Viego, or you can go for 6 Nightbringers with 4 Legionnaires, or 6 Nightbringers with 2 Ironclads or Mystics. The best emblems to grab late game are Nightbringer Emblem, this allows you to cut Vladimir for 6 Nightbringers, or even chase the 8 Nightbringer which is insanely good. Ironclads or Mystics Emblem can be good depending on your lobby, Legionnaire Emblems allow you to cut Irelia for a better unit, or to more easily fit in 6 Nightbringers or 4 Legionnaires. Getting contested on this comp is terrible. Not only is it close to impossible to hit Yasuo 3 star if you're both going for it, but it is also harder to just hit the other 2 stars for this comp. It is no surprise that playing contested is significantly worse than playing uncontested, but it is not impossible to get a top 4. So if you do get contested, you have two different options. Option 1 is to pivot. The best pivot for this comp is Fortnite Jax or Draven. The earlier you decide to pivot, the better, and both of these comps use similar items and units. I have made guides on both of these comps, so they're in the playlist on your screen right now. Option 2 is to contest and still go for 3 stars. This is definitely the riskiest option, and I would only do this if you meet these two requirements. The first one is to have perfect Yasuo items and also to have good items for Lee Sin or Diana. The second requirement is to have more HP and be farther ahead in tempo than your contester. It's crucial to keep scouting them throughout the mid game to see how close they are to hitting their 3 stars. The general goal here is to roll for 2 star Yasuo on far 1, hold your gold from there and wait until the contester dies. Once they die, you roll down to hit 3 stars as the units will go back into the pool. But know that this option is risky as you might bleed out too much if it takes the contester a long time before they die. General positioning looks like this. We have Lee Sin on the outskirt to slow the attack speed of as many units as possible, Rel is dead center of our frontline in order to shield them all, but also to shield Diana and stun the enemy backliners. Jax is backline to make assassins target him instead of Yasuo. Irelia is cornered as she is one of our tankier units. Yasuo is second row to avoid taking initial aggro while also being able to attack fast. Now moving on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Teemo and Velkas. We have Yasuo positioned to target Volibear. This is to make him cast his spell as fast as possible in order to not break any of our shields. Rel is backlined to not get targeted. This way she will cast after Volibear casts. Diana is jumping into the enemy backline. 
Against the second guy, the big threat is Draven and Viego. Jax is positioned to distract Viego, Yasuo wants to be away from the Draven to not get hit early into the fight, Rel is in the middle to shield our entire team, and Diana is jumping on the Draven. Against the third guy, the big threat is Tristana. Yasuo is walking to Lucian, Rel is dashing into the enemy to hopefully stun the backline, Lee Sin is walking into the clump of enemies to slow all of their attack speeds, and Diana is jumping into the clump of enemies as well to CC all of them. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 3000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.